one of the fastest nuclear bombers ever built, has been transported from France to the Yorkshire Air Museum in Elvington, near York. The French Mirage 4 was designed to carry a gigantic nuclear bomb. And with rising tensions between North Korea and the US, it's a timely reminder of a threat many thought had been consigned to the history books. Lucy Hester reports. The Mirage 4 in flight, a supersonic aircraft capable of 1,800 miles an hour. But its beauty belied its deadly purpose. It was built to drop a nuclear bomb 40 times more powerful than the one that destroyed Hiroshima. It's highly advanced, it's beautiful looking and it's superb performance, but it is a, a bringer of death and destruction, it, the ultimate threat. The Mirage 4, pride of the French Air Force, now the latest exhibit at Elvington Air Museum, and the plane buffs will love this one. Sleek lines, more like a rocket than a plane, and a huge bomb bay built into its undercarriage. So why is this relic of the Cold War here in a hangar in the Yorkshire Air Museum? Well, the big clue is right next to it, a British Halifax bomber, but with French Air Force markings. France was defeated and occupied in 1940, but the bulk of her air force was safe in North Africa. And from there, airmen formed two bomber squadrons that served at Elvington from 1944. There were so many French airmen here, it became known as La Petite France. And this bit of Yorkshire became a central part of the campaign to liberate Europe. This memorial garden in Elvington commemorates over 2,000 airmen who served with two all-French squadrons. And they paid a heavy price for their bombing raids against their own country. Over 200 of them died trying to liberate France. And it's that French connection that led to the gift of the finest surviving French bomber from a very different era. The two squadrons are still flying today, but during the, uh, the, the 60s, 70s, 80s, the French nuclear deterrent was done by these Mirage 4 aircraft, and the two French squadrons that were based here flew them. So there's a really strong connection. It took more than a decade of red tape and high-level negotiations before the Mirage could be moved from France. Any transfer of a major nuclear defence uh, aircraft to another country, let alone a, a museum third party uh, in another country, obviously has to be taken at the, the highest levels of government. But with the final hurdles cleared earlier this year on the outskirts of Paris, a team began the painstaking task of taking the aircraft apart and loading it on board a huge lorry. But it's as long as a swimming pool, and with a 12-metre wingspan, this was never going to be easy. After a whole day spent loading, the giant consignment was finally on its way to Yorkshire in a convoy of two lorries and two vans. I've made the reverse journey to the one that brought the Mirage to Yorkshire. It was just a few miles from here in Paris that the aircraft was once displayed at the City Science Museum. The Mirage 4 is an iconic aircraft in France. I'm here to learn more about it from one of the elite group of pilots who flew it during the Cold War. The Mirage 4 was the most beautiful aircraft that they built from the beginning. It was a fantastic aircraft. Uh, capable to, to fly at uh, very high altitude, 52,000 feet. It was a bomber, but in dogfight, some fighter pilots were very surprised. The only problem that we had, the visibility due to the nuclear flash, is very, uh, very sh small. No doubt de Gaulle took a military man's pride in the Mirage 4. A fighter... The Mirage 4 was the poster boy of the French Air Force, built in 1964, its ultimate weapon of attack in the new nuclear age. 
The Cold War began with the final collapse of Germany's Third Reich at the end of World War II. Relations between the Allies, the Communist Soviet Union in the East, and the capitalist West quickly soured. Nazi-occupied territories were carved up, and the so-called Iron Curtain came down across Soviet-claimed Eastern Europe. The Cold War was fueled by an arms race of nuclear weapons capable of previously unimaginable destruction. Against this backdrop, Pierre Alain Antoine got his pilot's wings back in 1970. He would one day fly a Mirage 4, armed with a 60 kiloton nuclear warhead facing the Soviet Union. That warhead was a freefall bomb and had to be dropped directly over its target. You arrive at uh, 600 knots, 200 feet. You climb at 4.5 G. When the bomb is dropped, you have to descend very quickly by an upside down maneuver at uh, minus 20 degrees at night in the clouds, etc., etc., to avoid the nuclear flash. It was a very difficult maneuver. It was a close-knit team of pilots who flew the Mirage. They shared the knowledge that should they undertake the mission they were trained for, thousands of people would die in an action that would probably be the pilot's last. The Mirage carried only enough fuel for the outward journey. It's not the question for a military. We were trained to launch the bombs. And it was absolutely not in, your, in our mind to say yes or not, no. We are following orders, and if it's not the case, change your job. It took four days of convoy travel for the aeroplane to reach its new home. When it arrived here in Elvington to join the collection, the prized Mirage was in bits like a giant airfix model. And it was then that the work to put it together had to begin. It took two weeks of hard work from specialist French engineers before the Mirage was complete. It's now the only one in existence outside of France. People understood that this was the place for it to come. It's been a great project and uh, uh, you only have to look at it and realise uh, it was worth every minute, really. An increasing proportion of the museum's collection now comes from the Cold War era and the Mirage joins planes like the Victor nuclear bomber, its British equivalent. The front line of the French nuclear deterrent, the Mirage was designed to keep France as a global power and after the bloodshed of the Second World War, able to resist ever being invaded again. Pierre Alain believes it played a huge part in post-war peace. Absolutely, for sure, at 100%. Because never, never a president uh, took the possibility to push the button first. But now, with uh, North Korea, I am not sure. And it's a real danger for us. It was once cutting-edge military technology. Now it's a museum piece. But the Mirage was designed to counter the threat of nuclear war. And today, decades on, that threat remains ever-present. <laughs>